Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So today we are going to talk about in Playwright, that is again uh, amazing feature that they have given to support React based selectors. So I'm going to pick this one and then this is a ninth selector we are going to talk about React based. React based selector means if the application is made of uh, a React JS framework, in that case we can create our own React based selectors and then Playwright supports that. For example, let's say you go to Netflix, but how will you get to know that this application is based on a React application or it's a React based UI? For example, let's say if you right click on it and then go to inspect and then uh, here it's simple input and name equal to available and then some type is available and then ID is available. For example, let's say ID is not available tomorrow. So how will you get to know that this is the React based application or what? Because it's nothing is displayed as such like that, that is a React based or what? So what you can do react says that you can download one tool and one plugin actually on Google Chrome extension. That is this one. See, this is the extension that I have given. This is actually saying the page is using the production build of react. It means this page is having the react component and the profiler. So this is actually uh, available here. The name of this is react developer tools that you have to enable it. So what you can do, you simply write react developer tools. Okay on Google Chrome extension, you can add it. So simple click on it. Right now this uh, React developer tool is already available on my system. So that's why it's saying remove from Chrome. So in your case, it will be add to Chrome, you have to add it. And then you simply close your browser and open it again. And then the it will be displayed over here under this section and you can just pin it. And then this is React developer tool, just like you do it other like a selector hub or any other thing that you do it, same plugin that you have to add it over here. And you open any appli uh, any application and then click on this particular plugin. It will tell you that this is the React based application or non React based application. For example, let's say if I go to some other application, I'll go to Amazon.com. On Amazon.com, I'll click on this uh, uh, plugin once again, saying it's saying the page does not appear to be using React. It means on Amazon we are not using any React application like this. But if you go to some other application, then you can just check it accordingly. Same thing, Netflix. Is actually made of react now in react what exactly we do when we design the react ui there are many components that we have to create so once the plugin is there it will add one just close it and what you do just open it and uh, go to your inspect and then open your chrome dev tools and now what you have to do here this is the arrow just click on it and then you will see components and the profiler so these two components are coming because of that particular plugin that you have downloaded and then you click on components and with this component inside the HTML DOM, inside the Chrome dev tools, there's a component section tab will be created and you can see that what a different react layout and the react components that you have created. For example, let's say I want to enter something here in this particular email field. So this is the HTML DOM, right? This is the HTML input tag and everything. Now again, you go back to the component. And here you will see that this is actually a P. You can see this is a P component. So this is called the component name having one key equal to email. So internally it is designed in that way. You can inspect from here also. This is your Chrome Dev Tools inspector and this is your uh, React component inspector. So you simply click on it and you can inspect this guy. Here you can see this is a label. This is the input like that. This is a button. Okay, it's available like this. So for example, let's say I want to use this guy. So here you can see this is a P component and with this P component, there are multiple properties are there. You can see props means property, right? So you just simply scroll it down and there are various properties. You can use it to create the playwright selector. So for example, let's see, I want to use some property, which is name equal to email. For example, uh, name and ID is not available in the DOM. In that case, you can just use, create your own react selectors using the component and it's supported by playwright so let's see how to do this so in order to do that what exactly i'm going to do i'm going to open the terminal i'll go to this particular project the playwright project and then i'm going to open the playwright uh, inspector with netflix.com that we used to do in previous projects also just open that okay and uh, in the previous videos also we have already seen that so here you can see that react recorder is started and we don't need to record anything you just simple minimize this so this is the uh, 
Netflix application got started <clears throat> and then what you do right click on it and go to inspect and then after that uh, you just uh, dock it to the bottom and uh, see this carefully now you see the magic you go to console let me increase the font size so that you will see it clearly now you can create your own playwright react selector so see playwright dot dollar and then with the help of those components that you have uh, seen here so let me just minimize this terminal now see this this is a component component name is p actually the component name will be displayed over here as well this is p component and the key is equal to email so there are various options that they have given if you go to the selectors uh, the playwright section over here here you can see that these are the uh, react selectors you can create that you can directly write underscore react you have to use as a prefix you have to write while creating the uh, selector and equal to the component name and then various other properties also you can give that right so let's see i'll show you how to do this so this is the component name p and then the property that i'm going to use it that is name equal to email so see this how will you do this so i'm going to write playwright find this particular element which is a react based application is equal to react based component and then you have to write the component name the component name is p and then you have to write the property so i'm going to write the property is uh, name equal to email whatever the property is there right name equal to email and the component name is p here right so let's see name is equal to email and then if it is inspecting this guy you can use this locator directly see it's saying yeah it is pointing to this particular dev so in the HTML, the equivalent HTML code is this. See, this is pointing to this guy. It's returning this particular web element. Open this. And under this web element, for example, there is one input field is available. Right? Okay. And then you can just say that, okay, fine. You just go to this and then go to its input child element. So you can write input and it's pointing to this. So this is a React based locator that we have created. And let's see it is actually working or not. So I'll do one thing, I'll just copy this and then go back to my clips and uh, I'll try to create a locator here. So I'm just saying page dot locator and this is a locator that I have created and it's an input field. So whatever the first element that you have found and then you do what? First you have to click on it. So for example, when you click on it, then you have to enter the value. Right guys, so I'll do one thing, whatever the first element is available you store inside the locator. So let's see, this is my email locator. Okay, and then from this email dot, first you do a click, right? And then from this email, then you do a fill also and whatever the value that you want to fill. For example, I'm entering Naveen at the rate gmail.com. Let's see, it is actually entering the value there or not. So right click on it, run as Java application. And see, we are using the React based locator on React based application. And uh, let's see, it's entering the email ID or not. See, this is so nice. It's entering Naveen at the rate gmail.com. Perfect. So, you will be using in such cases if you inspect it inside a DOM and you don't see much information like name is also not available or let's see, ID is also not available. And then you don't want to use type and data UI or something like this. And if you really want to use the react based uh, components you can use that because react based components will not change much but the chances are there that, okay these properties will be changed once the layout is getting changed or html dom will be changed here but the once the component is designed it will hardly it will be changed so it is more stable okay as compared to the html based uh, locators right this is so nice now let's say i want to scroll it down and uh, let's see there is another drop down here you can see this is the email uh, english and uh, arabic you can language you can select actually not email so let's see this is also react based component so again i go back to the component and here you can see this is the ui select is component name see such a different name ui select is the component name so how to do this so i'll create to create this uh, locator First, I'll always good practice that you just try to create this locator in the Playwright UI so that you will get to know is it a right locator or not. So with the Playwright dot a dollar will work over here as well. Always start with the underscore react because you have to tell Playwright that I'm looking for the react based locator and then is equal to what UI select put a square bracket and whatever the property that you want to use that you can use this. For example, let's see, I want to use uh, 
let's see this is a language picker property that i want to use you can use label text also you can use id also if you really want to use that right so let's say i'll want to use a uh, data uia so copy this and uh, come over here so this is data uia is the property name is equal to the value so see it is actually giving what see it is pointing to this guy or not let me just show you the see this is actually pointing to this can you see that right so now you can just use this particular uh, locator and uh, from here and then let's see we will try to click on it so let's see this so i'll do one thing i don't want to interact with this guy let me just comment it out i'll directly create the locator so page dot a locator this is the selector that we are going to use and then you write dot click over here let's see this is working or not it should click on that drop down that language drop down see there is no compulsion that you have to use this but this is an option that they have created if you are working with the normal html dom in that case also if it is working fine perfect now you can see it's clicking on the english over here right the drop down the language drop down and it's absolutely working fine so you have another option to handle the react based application and it works perfectly fine with playwright now let's do something interesting something interesting means let's see there are other footers also you can see there are many footer links can we collect multiple links yes of course you can do that so here when you inspect with the playwright ins uh, with the react inspector see this is your html dom inspector this is your react inspector select an element in the page to inspect it so i'm just going to click on it and then i'm going to see this here you can see that there are number of spans it's showing span in ui markup can you see in the pink color see i hope you can see it over here that see ui uh, span in the ui markup something like this and it's actually coming over here you can see that all the it's available under this footer footer is the main parent inside the react dom and then this is the ui markup so all these footer links are available with the ui markup so can we create a kind of concept we can collect number of footer links with the help of this ui markup is a component name because all the footer links are associated with the ui markup and the property is data uia or maybe tag type equal to span you can use this right so let's see how to do that so i'll again go back to my here and uh, what exactly all the footers that we are going to check it right so let's see let me just clear this i'm going to write playwright dot dollar once again and um, this is a react so application react underscore react is equal to what what is the component name the component name is the ui markup so i'll just copy this ui markup and then what a property that you want to use it so i want to use let's see data ui a property i want to use so this exact data ui a property i'm going to use it but you have to use data ui a equal to you have to use so let me just uh, equal to single quote you have to write right so let's see this is working or not so see this is giving you the span the first span but when you write with a double dollar it will give you the collections of all the footers so it's giving you 17 it means there are 17 footers are available when you open that you can see the first one second one third one fourth one like that and then the last one is a 16th one is the only on netflix the list one last one so why can't we use this just like we do it driver dot find elements in selenium same thing we can use with the page dot locator collect in a particular collection and then iterate and then print the text of each and every footer link that also you can do that right so let's see if you really want to use some other property so uh, tag type also you can use a tag type equal to span that also you can use this data uia also you can use that this is spatially designed in react by the developer to put the property for all the footers so you can use other properties as well so i'm going to use this one this property go back to your eclipse and uh, see this what exactly i'm going to do that page dot locator and this is a selector that i'm going to use and this will give you collections so here in playwright we don't have separate method like locator or locators if the multiple elements are there this locator method will give you the number of locators and every time we have to store inside the locator so let's see locator footer is equal to this and then after that um, this is the footer locator and then i really want to capture the text so i'll see all inner text or all text content i can use it 
So all text content or all inner text also you can use it. So let's say I'm using uh, all inner text. It means give me the text of each and every element which is available in this particular footer. Okay, this is not a list of web element. This is just a footer list. I mean, I mean the footer collection that we have captured and all inner text will give you the list of a string. So you can store inside the list of a string here. Okay, so this is my let's see footer list that you have captured. Now it's up to you how exactly you want to iterate this list either lambda also with the stream also you can use it or you can write a simple for each loop also you can use it so for example let's see i'm going to use a simple for each loop what type of data we have we have a string e in this particular footer list and then what we have to print we have to print the value of e here so let's see it is actually printing all the footer text on the page from netflix and then we have created a locator on the basis of the react locator not the normal HTML DOM locator. So we will see open the console and that's so nice. See all the footers are getting printed on the console. Frequently asked question help center up to only on Netflix. You can just compare. You can see frequent asked questions. Everything is getting printed on the console. Right. Perfect. So this is so nice that we can use it if you really want to uh, use directly on the footer that also footer list also you can use it with the help of a stream if you don't want to use a footer uh, for loop see I'll show you that also quickly so I'll just going to use that um, uh, see I'll just comment it out this one also so see it's a shortcut what you can do footer dot all inner text all inner text written type will be list of a string on list you can apply a stream and then on this particular stream you can just simple apply one for each loop and then on this particular for each uh, loop what you can do you can just directly use the system dot or print allen and then supply to e so all inner text convert that into a stream or it's giving you the list you can directly use for each loop also if you don't want to use a stream from here you can directly apply for each for each method says okay fine you give me the consumer so I'll consume in the form of E and then give it to system dot print Allen with the help of Lambda and then let's print it on the console one by one. So in one line also you can use that instead of writing a complete for loop. So it's up to you which you are comfortable with the for loop for each loop or the list or Lambda or streams. It's up to you. Okay. Now on the console you can see exactly same output you are getting it. So this is so nice in Playwright that it supports exactly same thing okay with the respect to react so there are various options you can create that you can just read out this uh, documentation they say that okay you can directly write uh, the component also see this is uh, here react component also you can write it some property value just like we create in the css selector exactly same thing property property value you can use that you can put without property value also that also you can use that and then it's saying that uh, it substring also you can use that contains also you can use that regular expression on the basis of key also you can use this nested property value also you can do that that also you can write but they have given one note here react selectors are experimental and prefixed with underscore so you have to write with underscore react then only it will recognize that it is react based so without that you cannot use it in your script so you have to add this prefix that is compulsory to add and then it's saying the functionality might change in future <coughs> maybe they might add some extra values or maybe some extra features over here or it might get changed also so just simple use it same thing it will be applied for the view selectors also the view.js if you're using it in that case you have to use underscore view view is another uh, javascript framework just like we have react and angular same thing view is also there and same view also you can just use the view based uh, locator strategy you can create that Okay, and in that case, you have to use view dev tools to see the structure and the component of the view. Okay, so we will see view later on. It's not that important, but you can try this and let me know if you have any issues. So that's all for this particular video, guys. I hope you are liking this amazing uh, Playwright tool. Please share with others, share with your friends and colleagues who are looking for Playwright training and Playwright courses. Let me know in case of any issues. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.